Hey guys, here are my predictions for the 2017 AQA P3 paper. So along with all the other prediction videos that I've made, I am not an examiner. I do not have any insider secrets to share with you. These are just educated guesses based on looking at the specification and looking at the past papers and doing some thinking, okay? So please, please, please revise everything really, really fully. And to make sure you revise everything fully, you can go and get the free revision guide over on my website. Now with P3, we are looking at about 25% of the paper being math skills. Now there aren't a huge number of equations and units to learn here like there are with P2. So we're going to need to be thinking about other things to make our math slightly more sophisticated. Things like significant figures, standard form, rounding, making sure we're storing numbers in the memory of our calculator so that we don't get rounding um, errors. Um, converting units, so converting from non-standard units into standard units. I've done a whole load of videos, again, in the book um, to help you with all of this. But if you really want to be aiming for those A's and those A stars, that is where the hard marks in the math questions are going to come in. Now, the 2016 six mark question was a little bit of a soft question. Um, it was necessarily that hard it's the kind of topic that people skip over because they think oh it's easy and then they skip over it thinking oh it's easy but they, then they won't get full marks on the question so i think this year's question is going to be a slightly more traditional question going for a slightly harder more physicsy thing so not as soft as last year's question on how to do a practical so we're thinking way back to the traditional P3 questions like um, the difference between ultrasound, x-ray, how they work, the advantages and disadvantages of these, how an electromagnet actually works. So the last year's question was how do you make an electromagnet? The good question that I like is how an electromagnet actually works because this is a hard question that comes up in P3. It really, really tests whether you've understood what is going on and then medical physics there is a load of medical physics that comes up in p3 it didn't come up in a massive way last year so those are what i like for um six mark questions medical physics including how ultrasounds um x-rays and cts work um the differences advantages disadvantages etc and um how electromagnets actually work because you have less equations in P3, you're less likely to get interlinked questions like you are in P2. So we can expect the math questions to be hard in slightly different ways. So longer math questions, much more text integrated math questions. I'm thinking things like balance moments, but without a picture, with loads and loads of text, and you have to pull the information out or nice big transformers question, something where there's two parts of the question and you have to work out one side and then you have to go and work out the other side as well. Now I mentioned last year's six mark question was a, a soft, what I call a soft physics question because it's based on practical skills. Do not forget your soft questions. They do make up a large chunk of um, the paper. So I'm talking about how to work out the center of mass of a regular object. This comes up loads, has come up previously as a six mark question. Um, but because people assume it's easy, they skip over it when they're rising and they don't do it. So center of mass, stability, graph interpretation, all of these are like soft skills that get overlooked when we're into P3 because you think P3 has to be hardcore physics. It doesn't. They will ask you some soft skills in there as well. Now one thing that didn't come up in last year's paper, which has come up in every other paper ever for P3, is the structure of the eye. And from next year, the structure of the eye is moving from physics into biology. So this is something that's falling off the physics specification. I actually quite like the structure of the eye. I have a bit of a soft spot for it because it's the first video that I ever made. It's like bits of paper and sharpies and took me absolutely hours and hours and hours. But Definitely learn the structure of an eye, learn what all the parts are, um, learn their functions, long-sightedness, short-sightedness, 
Ray diagrams, I know they came up last year, but they are a hardcore staple of P3. And once you get your head around them, they're a really, really lovely, easy way to get all the marks. Um, so sort of transformers, how transformers work, things like that. Um, so there you go guys, there are just a few thoughts on what might come up on this year's P3 exam. But please remember that I do not know exactly what is going to come up, so please revise absolutely everything really, really well. Um, good luck in the exams, if there's anything I can do to help, just let me know.